Jaratamadhava Kunjavihari Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 8, Chapter 17, Text 2 and 3, The Lord Agrees to Become Aditi's Son. Chintayatye kayad budhyaha 
महापुरुषम ईश्वरम प्रग्रयेन्द्रियादुस्ता स्वम मानसा बुरी सर रातही चिंतायार्ये कया बुद्धा महापालुषंभु ईश्वरम प्रग्रयेन्द्रिया दुस्तास दुस्तास वन मानसा बुरी सार सारत्ति ही चिंतया एकया बुद्धा महापुरुषम ईश्वरम प्रागयंद्रिया दुष्टास्वम मनसा बुरी सारत्ति ही Chintayanti, constantly thinking, ekaya, with one attention, buddhya, and intelligence, mahapurusham, unto, I'm sorry, upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Ishwaram, the Supreme Controller, Lord Vishnu, Pragriya, completely controlling. Indriya, the senses. Dusta, formidable, powerful. Aswan, horses. Manasa, by the mind. Buddhi Sarati, with the help of intelligence. The chariot driver. Mana. The mind, cha, also, eka agraya, with full attention, buddhya, with the intelligence, bhagavati, unto the supreme personality of Godhead, akila atmani, the super, uh, the supreme soul, the super soul of all living entities. Vasudeva, unto Lord Vasudeva, Samadaya, keeping full attention, Chachara, executed, Ha, thus, Payavratam, the ritualistic ceremony known as Payavrata. Okay, with full, undiverted attention. Aditi thought of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And in this way brought under full control her mind and senses, which resembled forceful horses. She concentrated her mind upon the Supreme Lord Vasudeva. Thus she performed the ritualistic ceremony 
known as Payorata. Hmm, Srila Prabhupada's purport. This is the process of bhakti yoga. Ayabila sita sunyam jnana karmana navritam anukulena krishna silanam bhaktir uttamam. Rupa hmm. Goswami's verse from Bhakti Rasambhatu Sindhu. One should render transcendental loving service to the Supreme Lord Krishna favorably and without desire for material profit or gain through food of activities or philosophical speculation. That is called pure devotional service. So someone asks you, well, what is pure devotional service? You just remember or quote this verse and that is the understanding. One simply has to concentrate on the lotus feet of Vasudev Krishna. Savai mana Krishna padara vindayo. Then the mind and senses will be controlled and one can engage himself fully in devotional service to, of the Lord. The devotee does not need to practice the Hatha Yoga system to control the mind and senses. His mind and senses are automa automatically controlled because of the unalloyed devotional service to the Lord. Chaksu un militam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha shri chaitanya manobhistam staptitam yena bhutale svayam rupa kadamayam dadati swam padantikam nama om vishnu padaya krishna pristaya bhutale shri makti bhakti vedanta swami tinamine namaste saraswati deve ani pacharine nirasesa sunyavari pasyatya desa Panchakopa, Taru Vischa, Kripa, Sindhu, Be, Bacha, Patitan, Um, Pavane, Bio, Vaishnave, Bio, Namaho, Namaha, Jai Sri Krishna, Jai Tanya, Prabhu, Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadadar, Sivasati, Gor, Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. Chila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hmm. So the mind is, uh, in the, there's only one problem, the mind. <laughs> and when Prahlad Maharaj was was criticized or accused by his father, Harani Kashipu, he said, you're siding with my enemy, Vishnu. And Pala's response was, my dear father, there's, there's only one enemy, the uncontrolled mind. <laughs> and that's what you have. He was telling his father, basically, that's that's your enemy. And Pala Maharaj is giving the instructions to clarify everything, that actually there is no other problem except the mind. When the mind is focused on the Supreme Lord, everything and everything becomes auspicious in the devotional life of the person performing the activity. And when the mind is focused on the senses and the objects of the senses, then one is gradually becoming more and more connected to the entanglement of the material energy. We have to understand in this material world, that word entanglement is intrinsic to the definition of the material world. What does that mean? That as soon as you get involved with material activities, you get entangled. And the more you get involved, the entanglement becomes more and more complex and more and more hard to even understand or even remove. So therefore, directing the mind towards the Supreme Personality of Godhead and performing activities to please the Supreme Lord is the perfection of one's activity in devotional service. Here Prabhupada mentions in the purport that um, hmm. the uh, one should focus the mind on the lotus feet of the Lord. Um, this is called pure devotional service. Uh, let's see where he's... Con he, is, he doesn't say focus, he says concentrate. Savai mana pa krishna padara Quoting that verse by Ambarish, Ambarish Maharaj, where he f used all of his senses in different ways to serve the Lord, uh, using his ears to hear the glories of the Lord, 
using his tongue to taste the prashadam and speak the glories of the Lord, using his eyes to see the beautiful deity form of the Lord, using his legs to walk to the temple of the Lord, using his hands to massage the bodies of the devotees of the Lord. Now, different ways that one can engage in devotional service according to the nature of a particular sense. And that way all the senses can be used in Krishna consciousness. Even performing sex life, and Krishna says, I am that sex life which is not contrary to religious principles, which means for procreation of children. So all of the senses can be used in the service of the Lord um, accordingly. And when the service is engaged in the service of the Lord, that is called that is called absorption, concentration. And when that continues to to uh, develop, it, it actually comes to the point of um, samadhi or a full absorption in the Lord and the activities of devotional service. So Diti now she's brought her mind and senses under the control. And uh, Krishna also confirms that the senses are like horses. He mentions that in the 11th canto when he's talking about how to control the mind. He, he uses the analogy, uh, just like when you're riding on a horse, if you want to do, direct the horse in a certain direction, you pull in that direction, and you pull the reins, but if you pull too hard, the horse will jump or buck and not be able to respond to your command. Or if you, do, if you just relax, then the horse will, may go in whatever direction it wants to go in. So that is, that is the idea of controlling the mind. One has to learn how to control the mind in such a way that it can direct the mind where you want it to go. In the beginning, we might say that there, there is a forceful effort to somehow focus the mind on the Lord in devotional service. Maybe because in the very beginning of one's devotional service, we are very much accustomed to material activities and material sense gratification, so an effort has to be made in that direction. But as one becomes, what we say, attuned to directing that, the mind and senses in that direction, then it becomes natural. Then to think of the Lord is not so hard, it's actually natural. When someone asks Prabhupada about, are, are, you, are you always thinking of the Lord? Prabhupada said, I have never ever forgot the Lord. <laughs> and for a, a great soul or one who is fixed in devotional service, to think of the Lord is natural and to not think of the Lord is unnatural. <laughs> Whereas we might find ourselves in the in struggling to think of the Lord. But uh, as you practice this, and doing that means to divert the mind and attention away from the objects of the senses. And the mind is a conditioned. What the mind is made up is a complexity of thoughts, desires, activities, impressions, and experiences from so many lives. And that is the unconscious place part of the mind. And they come to the conscious service in co connection to the objects of the senses. As soon as the sense objects appear, then the mind directs the senses towards that accordingly, whether it's favorable or unfavorable due to the mind's understanding. And, uh, but one has to be aware of that and then just divert the mind away towards Krishna or think of Krishna in some, other, in some way. And Prabhupada makes that point about remembering the lotus feet of the Lord. In one statement Prabhupada makes, he says that um, um, if when you no, when you remember the lotus feet of the Lord, you will never be impeded in any of your activities in devotional service. It's not a formula you have to somehow or other figure out. It works simply by remembering Krishna's lotus feet. You're, you are going to perform your activities in the best possible way. Because you're actually connecting with Krishna through, them, through the mind. The spiritual connection doesn't have to be what we say direct. It becomes direct through the indirect process of meditation or thinking about Krishna. 
Therefore, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, when he describes what he sums up after speaking to Arjuna, all of the particular principles that he needs to know in order to get him to agree to fight on the battlefield, Arjuna is asking so many questions and Krishna is answering them and going into more and more details. Towards the 18th chapter, he starts to talk about the mind again. And then finally, he explains that, you know, manmana bhava mad bhakta mam yaji mam namas guru. And he says that these are the activities that make up devotional service. And the first one, he says, always think of me. He doesn't say think of me. He says, always, satatam. <laughs> Always think of me. So when we always think of Krishna, or at least trying to practice to always think of Krishna, we're with Krishna. <laughs> because the thought of Krishna and the intensity of that thought as it develops becomes more and more just like if there's fire in a certain place in the room and you're in another place in the room. As you get closer to the fire, the light becomes brighter and the heat becomes stronger. So through the concentration of the mind on Krishna, as that increases, then the presence of Krishna is more and more experienced through that, through that concentration. And then it becomes more and more easy and natural to remember Krishna. And that's the perfection of spiritual life, to remember Krishna. And as by remembering Krishna, we start to develop an attraction for Krishna. And when that attraction turns into attachment, then, then love starts to develop, or affection for Krishna develops, and that is the process of success. Otherwise, the mind will go wherever it wants to go. Chanchalam hi mana Krishna pramiti balabhadridha tasyaham nigraman maye vayar idam saduskaram. Arjun says, uh, My dear Lord, <laughs> you're asking me to do something impossible. He said, the wind is easier to control than the mind. <laughs> and he's not exaggerating. <laughs> you know, the mind will jump at any particular time. You see, you can experience in your own life. You'll be sitting here chanting japa, and somebody will walk in. And as soon as you, someone comes in, you somehow or other, you think you see that person. And as soon as you see that person, you think of something in relationship to that person. And then you know your thought, your stream of thoughts goes so far away. You're in downtown Ljubljana now, shopping somewhere in one of the stores. <laughs> Just by one little thought leads to another thought, leads to another thought. And if the, if you don't, if you're not checking that, bringing it back to where it's supposed to be, it'll continue through association. With with the previous thought, and it'll lead to another thought. And that's the mind. Uh, the mind, as it's explained, is in the mode of goodness, and therefore it's easily malleable. It goes this way or that way. But the intelligence is more or less fixed in the mode of of passion, and it's stronger, and therefore it can curb the restless mind by directing the mind in the right way. Therefore, that's the process. Using the intelligence which is the discriminating factor of the living entity, to direct that mind in the way you want it to go, which means in devotional service, like that. Keep the mind in devotional service. Even in ordinary dealings, one can still continue to remain in Krishna consciousness, even doing the most ordinary things, such as taking care of your personal bodily needs or just interacting with people in general. If you control that mind throughout the day and then direct that mind always to Krishna in some form or another. Um, and this is the process of devotional service. Aditi, she's, um, she really fixed her mind in order to perform this. She was determined to somehow or other uh, get her sons back in the position of their control of the universal affairs. And she was so determined, and seeing her determination and her, her, uh, her, what, what was it? 
uh, her willing to do anything to achieve it, uh, uh, Kashyapa Muna gave, it, gave her a nice way. He gave her something that was recommended, given to him by Lord Brahma himself. So it was authorized, the process of Peyavata. And she successfully executed, and now you'll see in the upcoming verses. Um, actually, it starts in the next verse. Um, the Supreme Personality of Godhead starts to appear. In fact, it's the next verse. He, he, the Lord is actually appearing. So, And then uh, the Lord will know what to do because he's actually come. Yada yada hi dharmasya. When he comes, he also comes in order to reestablish religious principles. So you might say that it's the desire of the Lord to also come and rearrange, or re realign religious principles and reestablish the saintly control. So it's interesting. It's not that she had to really convince the Lord by her austerities to make him come out of schedule. No, he was actually planning to come anyway. <laughs> and his planning to come was just inspired by her determination to bring him through this process. So um, a devotee is powerful. A devotee is very, very powerful because this process is so powerful. It connects one with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And because one is connected with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the more that connection is there, the more the power of the Supreme Lord becomes available to that devotee. Therefore, devotees can do miraculous things. That's why Prabhupada, when Prabhupada said, when we were there back in the old days, he said, uh, you know, we can take over the world in 18 days, but you're not ready. <laughs> in other words, you know, it's not so hard to control the world. <laughs> it's, easy, it's, it's actually harder to control your senses. <laughs> well, of course, yeah, in order to control the world, you have to control your senses, but controlling the world... <laughs> Is not the business of a devotee. The, devotee the, 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 the world is controlled by Krishna, giving it back under the control of those who are qualified to control. That means Krishna's angas, those uh, those energies that he puts in place for control, which have been usurped by the demons. So the devotees can can be that instrument to re, to fil facilitate the, the the Lord's re controlling the world through his energies again through by rem by taking shelter of Krishna and remembering Krishna in devotional service. The devotees become very, very powerful. Just like how is it possible to distribute so many books? We're going and we're asking people to just take a book and they they're coming out that day and they're not they're not thinking I'm gonna buy a spiritual book. <laughs> That's not usually what they're thinking. But somehow it happens, and it happens with many people. Why? Because the power of devotional service is that one, when one wants to serve the Lord, and is and that service is authorized by the by the spiritual master, and then that combination of these two features make, make wonderful things happen. Man, make money. So the devotees don't have to worry about anything. All we have to do is take shelter of Krishna and engage in devotional service. There's no worry in for a devotee because the devotee knows Krishna's in control. <laughs> and if I take shelter of Krishna and he controls everything and, I, and I'm also under his control, therefore I'm in under the perfect, I'm under the perfect protection being under his control. There's no other way to control my mind and senses than then putting it under the control of the Supreme Lord, who is knows what to do. <laughs> when we when he take we take shelter of him, he knows what to do with us. He doesn't. He gives us everything we need and more, simply by that that shelter. So, but the mind and senses are restless. They're like horses, and they need to be controlled through. Uh, what we say practice 
And as Krishna responds to Arjuna, when Arjuna speaks, Jai Sisi Panchatattva Ki Jai. As Arjuna asks the question, you know, it's impossible for me to control the mind. Krishna says, you know, I agree, but there is a way. <laughs> what is that? Abhyasena Tukunteya Vairagya Chagriyate. That simply by uh, practice, and stopping your bringing your mind and senses to sense gratification. If you're practicing Krishna consciousness and still engaging in sense gratification, the process is very slow. It's like trying to build a fire and at the same time throwing water on it every once in a while. <laughs> so it has to be, you just keep that fire and keep the water away. In other words, Learn how to see, as Krishna explains, no, Sanatana Goswami explains, accept what's favorable and reject what's unfavorable. And that's something we have to learn. And that's the rules and regulations help us stay in the favorable situation and also help us to understand what is unfavorable for devotional service. So this is the process, control that mind. The mind is a rascal. <laughs> you can never trust him. Srila Prabhupada was giving one lecture and he said he was he began the lecture by saying never trust your mind. <laughs> Always distrust, he says. And then he goes on to say, Where is that written? It is not, but it is current. And because it is current in other words, the Acharyas have said that. Because the Acharyas have said that, it is it is also good as Shastra. Never trust him. And Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati used to say, the mind is a non-devotee. <laughs> and we're not supposed to associate with non-devotees, right? <laughs> so that's wrong association. So we have to, so what do you do? You can't get away from your mind because he's... You know, you guys have been around for a long time together, life after life. Maya Jiv, Maya Ravese, Kacho Bese, Kacho Hey, Bubu Bai, Jeev Krishna Das, Hey Vishwash, Kali Da, Nukana, life after life, we're traveling in different Kardanam Guna Sangha, so Shadasa Joni Shanmashuts, up, down, this way, this planetary system, that way, this way, everywhere. Now we finally got to the place where we can l take shelter of a peaceful situation. In other, in other words, no more being pushed around by the three modes of material nature. But if we still identify with the mind, then we are in trouble. Therefore, one has to control the mind by the senses, by the intelligence, and direct the intelligence towards guru, shadu, and shastra. That's, if everything is in line with those three principles, then then that's an abs then that is a, a right form of understanding, a right form of activity, like that. If it's outside of that, then it's questionable, and usually it's wrong. So um, check everything according to Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra. And then the the mind, when something comes into the mind, is it the instructions of my spiritual master? Or is it just the, the the fluctuation of the restless mind, like that? And when something obviously comes that is not Krishna consciousness, immediately think of Krishna. <laughs> Practice that. Because that will push out that negative thought and again connect you with the with Krishna in devotion. At least it can connect you with Krishna and then devotion will come later. But that's the process here. So, and the sixth canto, I'm sorry, fifth canto, sixth chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam, there's three or four verses in a row there describing the nature of the mind. How it's like, you know, like trying to control wild horses. But, as Krishna said, practice. <laughs> practice and stop practicing sense gratification at the same time. <laughs> Okay, and the mind will convince you sometimes that something which is not Krishna conscious is, is good. 
you ever find yourself in that situation where you're not sure, is this Krishna conscious or not? And the mind will say, yeah, you've been doing it for a while, no harm. <laughs> Keep doing it. <laughs> you know, the mind will trick you. It'll say things just to fulfill its own uh, desires for enjoyment. And the false ego is the subtle voice behind the mind, kicking the mind in a certain direction to make sure that it pulls the soul into the material energy more and more. The mind is also being directed by this other guy called the false ego. <laughs> and he's hard to see. At least you can see the mind. And he's a little bit more noticeable. You can watch him where he's going. But the false ego, he's, he hides. You can't even see him sometimes. <laughs> The only way you can find out if you have a false ego is you ask somebody else. Because <laughs> they can tell you, I can see it. <laughs> if they're honest, anyway. <laughs> okay, so I'll stop here and see if there's any comments or questions. The restless mind. Wow. Any questions online today? Yes. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, we have a question from Avadut Rai Das. Vishwanath Chakravarti says, the senses and their devatas are under the control of the mind. Question. Okay, the control of the sense I can understand, but how can the mind control the devatas of the senses? Moreover, the, later... How can the mind control the devatas of the senses? senses. Mm -hmm. The devatas are in charge of different aspects of creation. And there's different devatas that are connected with the different senses in the mind. So they they are more... So if you are engaged in devotional service, then the devatas are going to work according to, you know, your devotion to Krishna because they're, ser they're, they're serving Krishna according to Krishna's direction. But they'll facilitate the desires of the living entities, just like we had the example. Um, this is more like the reverse example. When Sanatana Goswami was um, meditating on, where was that? Manasaganga. Right outside of Manasaganga, there is a temple of Lord Shiva there. And. Uh, I think it's Shakaleshwar uh, Mahadev. There's eight lingas there. And uh, every night, Sanatana Goswami would do his, he would write, write by Manas and Ganga under a light. And uh, mosquitoes were bothering. So after being bothered by mosquitoes for so many days, he decided, I'm not going to go stay here. Tomorrow I'll go to a different place. But Lord Shiva was really wanting Sanatana Goswami to stay because he really appreciated the, the presence of a sadhu. So he appeared just after, you know, Sanatana Goswami was thinking like that in the form of an, uh, an old brahmana and said, my dear Sanatan, just stay one more night, and I, 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 I believe there will be no more mosquitoes here. Mm -hmm. So Lord Shiva, he's, the, he's, the, he's Mahadev, <laughs> so he's in the best of all the devas. So he went to the demigods and said, keep your mosquitoes away from Sanatan. <laughs> so after that, there was no mosquitoes, and even to this day, that place 
where Sanatan was doing his bhajan there. There's no mosquitoes there. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So they 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 do their they do their service. But if we're engaged in devotional service, then they'll facilitate that. They'll help because they'll can to help us in the process of uh, engaging in devotional service by their position, their power. And then just after writing the question, he writes below that, moreover, later, Ridainanda Maharaj writes, demigods who administer happiness and distress can never be brought under our control. Quite confusing contradictions. So first, it says we can bring them under control, and then it says you can't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, you can't. You can't control the demigods. The de demigods are in a higher position. But you can control the demigods by engaging in devotional service. Then they're under the control of Krishna. Mm -hmm. And anything under the control of Krishna works accordingly. Mm-hmm. So by engaging in devotional service, not only do you, you can control the demigods, but you can control the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it says that when you perform devotional service in a pure way, pure devotional service, the effect of that pure devotional service uh, emanates out and affects other areas mm -hmm. of the world also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... You can't control them, but if you engage in devotional service, they automatically, you know, mm -hmm. work under that, the control of Krishna. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, then he asks another question. Do you, is that okay to read the second question? Well, I guess. There's nobody else got their hand up. <laughs> On the way to Nilachal, Lord Chaitanya tested his associates whether they have some property. No one had any, and so he was satisfied. There was no yukta vairagya. Question, is there a higher renunciation than yukta vairagya? <laughs> well, Lord Chaitanya never liked his devotees to, to, have, to carry things like food or money when they were traveling. You know, there's one, there's one story with, you know, what was it? Well, Vasu was Vasu Ghosh. One of the Ghosh brothers, yeah. The Lord chastised him for that. Haitaki. Yeah. So yeah, that, that was Lord Chaitanya's program. Mm -hmm. He wanted that whatever they need when they were traveling, they could get it by begging. Mm -hmm. But to say that we should follow that, that's, we don't follow that. <laughs> We're more like yukta vairagya, right? <laughs> sometimes sometimes more yukta than vairagya. <laughs> Mostly yukta. <laughs> Just look in my closet, you'll see all the, all the things that are all ready to be yukta, yukta, <laughs> engaged in vairagya. <laughs> I don't know when, but it'll happen. <laughs> so, it's not, yeah, it's just like, now we don't follow that so much. But, I mean, if you were traveling, if you were one of the associates with Lord Chaitanya, you would follow that. <laughs> we are his associates, but not in that in the same way. <laughs> That was, you know, St. Francis of Assisi was the same thing. He didn't like his brothers carrying anything, any food or anything with them. They, they did everything by begging. Mm -hmm. So that's a particular mood of devotional service. And so, mm -hmm. But it's not the only mood. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Um, I have a question, if I may ask. Yeah, I thought you would finally come to that point. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking, Guru Maharaj, you said in the lecture that the mind is in the mode of goodness and intelligence is in the mode of passion. And the false ego is in the mode of ignorance. 
Yeah. Yeah. The pure mind. Pure intelligence. Pure, pure ego. Yeah. Yeah, it's in the Srimad Bhagavatam. It says that. Mm. There's a demigod for the mind is Aniruddha, demigod for the intelligence. Well, actually, yeah, Pradyumna. For the for the false ego, it's I think it's Lord Shiva. Huh? Sankarshan, yeah, Sankarshan. So yeah, the mind is in the mode of good. That's why it's it it will wander just by its own like that. It needs that discriminating factor in order to check it. And that's where the intelligence comes in. Mm -hmm. But uh, <coughs> isn't the intelligence supposed to be higher than the mind? Um, well, it's a feature of the mind for discrimination and determination. That's the nature of the intelligence. It allows the living entity to develop a determination and discrimination in, in their activities. Yeah, but these are the pure modes, not the m not the material mode of passion. It's like it says at the beginning of creation, when the Lord wants to, there are, the, the, the original demigods are there. <laughs> and all of the demigod, other demigods that come in the different universes are expansions of the original demigods. Mm -hmm. Oh, the mind is also created at that time. At least it's reawakened from its previous uh, activities in its in the previous creation it comes back after the after the interim period everything is there but as soon as the mind comes in contact with the material energy then it develops these characteristics <laughs> But by nature, it's pure. So one of the one of the qualities of the mind is clear consciousness. You read that in the Bhagavatam. Clear consciousness. And that's why one of the qualities of the mind is serenity. But not, not the intelligence doesn't have serenity. <laughs> just take it as it is. I mean, I'm just giving you this, this Shastra. <laughs> if you want to read more, read, read about it in the third canto. When Kapila Dave explains about the mind, intelligence, and false ego, like that. Hmm. Anything else? Looks like that's it. Okay, thank you. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. <laughs>